Uh, hello and welcome to another Juicy Gossip show. Uh, we're getting a little more serious this month and talking about health, illness, diet and well-being. In the UK, around 145,000 people are already living with Parkinson's disease and as many as in one in 37 will be diagnosed with it in their lifetime, which is quite shocking really. Um, our special guest is Matt Eagles from Cheshire, an amazing and truly inspirational Parkinson's disease sufferer, being diagnosed at the age of seven. So welcome, Matt. Thank you very much indeed, Cracky. That was a, that was a lovely introduction. Thank you so Aww. much. <laughs> and we're also joining us today is Helen Crusos, who is our uh, psychologist expert, and also Sarah Wall, who is our lifestyle and diet expert. So welcome both to you. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, it's yes, going to be an interesting lovely. show, I think. Nice to meet um, you. So, Matt, we're going to just go straight in with you because you're just fascinating. So we're thrilled to welcome you onto the show today and to help us really raise awareness with the, with, about Parkinson's um, disease. So I know that you were diagnosed as a child at the age of seven. Um, and as, as an average, I've got here that people tend to be diagnosed from the age of around 62, which yeah. make you extremely unique. Um, so what, what I really want to know is, can you tell us about your symptoms at the time and, and how this, this process, how you were diagnosed with Parkinson's? Yeah, absolutely. It all began during a holiday, I guess, in the 1970s when we used to go to Cornwall every year. And I kept on having like a pain in my shoulder and I couldn't balance at all. Mm. Now, obviously... That's quite unusual for a little child anyway, not to be able to balance. But little things like my mum my used to help me cut my toenails and I, I used to put one foot on that, one foot on the toilet bowl and I, she used to, to cut my nails. And one particular time I can remember, I just couldn't balance and I kept on grabbing hold of the towel rail. And my mum would go, stop it, Matthew, stop messing about. Yeah. And she like hit me and what have you. Not, not in a bad way, but she just thought I was obviously being naughty. That was another thing. I couldn't stand up in my school assembly either. I went to Pussbank Junior School in Macclesfield and um, the headmaster noticed I just kept on toppling backwards. I didn't know what the matter was. No. Um, but probably the most of it hurtful, well, not hurtful, but Obvious for me was when I played sport because I loved playing sport. And everything I did was in slow motion. I suddenly lost my... I played junior rugby for Macclesfield and I just couldn't keep up with the other lads. Mm. And my uncle and my dad, who used to come and watch me, used to sort of shout, come on, Matthew, get after them, get after them. And, you know, that I just, just couldn't keep them up. I used to dive in, I used to love playing goalkeeper and I used to dive over the ball after it had gone in the net. Yeah. Much to the amusement of everybody else, but I, my reactions were so slow that yeah. I was generally making an attempt for the, for the ball. But it is, they, they, they didn't go anywhere near Parkinson's at first. They thought it was a brain tumour. Right. Or they thought I'd got arthritic knees and I spent a lot of time as a young boy I guess you could, almost like a health tourist, if you like, because during the week I would go spend the time in Booth Hall Children's Hospital. And um, to, to this day as well, the theme of Coronation Street really rings because it hasn't changed. And that used to be the time that I used to go to bed yeah. or I have to be put, I was put to put, I was to go into my, my, my room at Booth Hall Children's Hospital. And you know what? I hated every minute of it. Mm. I hadn't got a clue what was going on. Uh, I don't think my parents did really. I mean, it's there's so much more information out there now that you can find yourself. There was just nothing, yes. you know. Now we're well, unheard of almost in, well, that, yeah. in that time, wasn't it? And and especially your age, there's no way that they'd be looking for something like that because yep. it is really known to be affecting people that are a lot older. So you know what? I'm going to surprise you now, though, Joanne, and probably Helen and Sarah. Well. I think I'm quite lucky. And the reason I said is that is every experience I've ever had. Go, okay, 
going to school, going to university, working and everything else, I have no life to compare it to. No. Whereas no. people who get to older maybe know what it was like beforehand. I cannot remember. I've all what this is. I mean, I'm 53 now. And uh, I just can't remember not having it. What an interesting fact, though, because that you don't think like that. You just think, oh, that's terrible. But you're actually right, aren't you? You don't you don't know life any differently. No. And children in, in particular, I mean, they're very resilient. Mm. I mean, I remember getting very upset at times and uh, but I had moments of joy as well, like uh, yeah. in 1977 at the Queen's Silver Jubilee party we had in, in our local street. Um, fortunately, my mother had made me have elocution lessons because I was sounding a bit like Noel Gallagher, even at the age of seven. So she, my mum hated my accent. So she actually made me have elocution lessons and compete in um, music and drama festivals which yeah. has really helped my voice because voice can go really bad with Parkinson's. But yeah. Because I've had a lot of uh, experience now at reading, at reading in public speaking, my voice is actually quite good. But uh, no, it's a tough gig. But yeah. I think positive attitude makes a huge difference. I think so too. So just quickly, can you run through the main, um, the main symptoms, what, what normally you would you would expect to receive from Parkinson's disease? I mean, I, yeah. I know some of it because my father's got Parkinson's, but I think yeah, it would be good for people to know. Absolutely. I mean, it's unique for everybody. It's important to say that first yes. of all. But it, I mean, it, I tell you what it is, and it isn't just the shakes. There's no. well over 40 different symptoms, both motor and non-motor. Um, for me, it's rigidity. I, I can't balance. Mm. But there's also, there's apathy. There's, you can't sleep. You, have, you get constipated. There's so many sort of psychological side effects as well. It affects your, um, your heating system in your body. <clears throat> so you can get really hot sometimes, which in, it affects every single aspect of, the, of your body in the way you move everything that you take for granted in yeah. your movements yeah. yeah it affects but it also affects your emotions as well in what and, uh, respect does it does it give you no empathy or are you very emotional i've i've won certainly since i had my deep brain stimulation i'm very emo i can cry at the drop right. of a heart yeah but i can also get laugh hysterically at inappropriate times as well okay and that i think that is our act there is a name for it which the name escapes me but it's uh oh it's uh something bull bar i think it's bull bar crying or bull bar laughter or something anyway it just means laughing or crying at inappropriate moments. yeah but they're all symptoms of, of parkinson's okay and does does it affect your memory it certainly can do, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm. people might suggest that because I'm a bloke, I can only do one thing at once anyway. <laughs> but, but I hate to say it is actually true. Yeah, no I multitasking. Can only, <laughs> what, yeah, I, can't, I, can't, yeah, I just can't multitask at no. all. <laughs> I think that's so, just I mean, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 that's something I can tick off the list and now. That's, that's, that's encouraging. And, and can I just interrupt there, just from a psychological point of view? It's uh, it's probably not a thing or not something to uh, strive for in terms of multitasking. We're not meant yeah. to multitask. <laughs> well, the, Helen, you just made my day. Yeah, Thank you so you much. Are. <laughs> <laughs> because what you do is you end up trying to do lots of different things and yet not doing one thing in the way that you want it and not really doing it properly because your attention and focus is spread across many different things so although it might look you know pretty snazzy and pretty effective that hey look at me I'm doing you know five ten things at the same time yeah. Yeah. but really when you ask that person so how effective do you think you are in each of those things I'm not a betting person, but I'll say they probably say not very well. 
Wow. That's, that's interesting. Really yeah, no, that's very interesting, that is. Yeah, isn't it just? And it really comes, goes back to our ancestry history, really, because back in caveman times, when man was confronted by beasts and it was all about survival, um, you couldn't afford to multitask. You needed to just focus on being killed. You know, so you either, you know, you know it's a whole yeah. fight, flight, freeze response. You know, yeah. you, it was either one or the other. You couldn't, you know, t take on, you know, the, the prospect of being killed and at the same time worry about the pretty little daisies in the field or, you mm. know, you know, it's, we're not uh, uh, wired that way. So in actual fact, when people talk about males and females differing on that multitasking element, it's not really... Um, probably something that we need to strive for no. <laughs> you've, you've, Helen you've just actually reminded me of another, <laughs> another thing that's very very common in Parkinson's patients and that's over dramatizing stuff and overthinking yeah. stuff mm -hmm. very very common you see the worst in everything and you think the worst is going that catastrophization that's exactly the yeah. that's exactly yeah. what it is yeah is it teamed with paranoia as well is, is there an element of it, paranoia or is that the it, no it it can it can be you can get yeah. hallucinations you can the, literally there are so many associated symptoms with parkinson's that just aren't mm. talked about yes and i think i don't know whether we're going to go on to discuss it but i mean it's i'm regarding it as my life's work to completely change people's the public the general public public's perception of living with parkinson's yeah because if, if you if you if, if we were to all google parkinson's now we would come across an image of william that was penned by william gower in the 1800s yeah. and that has been told by jet taught by generations and generations and that's how people see it yeah and so that it's for, the older people and this vision um it's the, it's yeah. a disease, a disease of old white men. Yes. That's so I would, about, I, yeah, yeah. So I would argue, how would that? I mean, heaven forbid that anybody, on, if Helen or Sarah or yourself were diagnosed, how would that make you feel if you googled it? Because let's face it, we all do. And what you get is an image of, a, of an old guy. You know, yeah. it doesn't exactly fill you full of confidence for the future, does it? No, it doesn't. But a question to you is: Is it? Is it more predominantly men, though? Is it, it or is it there is. a mix? It's, it, it is. I think it's about 60, 40, possibly. But it is more. I don't know why it is. Mm -hmm. But I suspect, I mean, it's there are a lot of younger people who have Parkinson's. Because Parkinson's is very much an ism. There's a whole, it covers a whole umbrella of, of um of symptoms and some of them are quite sort of portray themselves quite differently so yeah yeah it is predominantly men but the women and particularly younger women can get it as well and yeah, of course the medication reacts differently at times of the month as well which is being looked in i was going to say about the medications but i actually do know a lady that's got parkinson's and she's yeah. around coming up for 60 um yeah. but i if i'm honest i only know one other person and that's my father and he's bless him he is 85 now yeah and he's, he's had it since he was most probably about 77 yeah um yeah so anyway moving on i'm really interested to ask you about any research that you've had with this disease because i know i've read up about a lot of things about you online yeah. so can you just tell us what part of of research you've you've been um you know you, you've been doing in these years well over the years i've taken part in lots of different researches all types of research and yeah. you, but i think one of the best ways of doing it is actually to undertake it yourself i i had deep brain stimulation 16 years ago yeah which at the time was pretty cutting edge surgery <laughs> um and i think the majority of the research that's going on is to help people. It's either to slow, stop, or reverse the symptoms. Okay. I mean, the market for Parkinson's drugs is get runs into the billions for the pharmaceutical companies. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
but until they find, I mean, they're looking at genetic <laughs> genetic variants of it. They're looking at biomarkers to see how they can identify before it starts. There's a lady up in Scotland who's doing research. And ironically, her, her two boys went to King's School and I met her out in Japan, in Kyoto in 2019. Um, she can smell Parkinson's now. How bizarre is that? That is amazing. Apparently, you give off a, a different pheromone or something. Or, yeah. And certain yeah. people, and I would imagine certain animals can probably smell it in yes. way, way before it actually comes or symptoms actually uncover themselves, if you like. It's, it's yeah. quite incredible. Which so, makes sense, really, doesn't it, Joanna? Because yeah. from my limited, I'm not an expert like, like you, Matt, by no means, but from what very little information I, I do know, you know, because of, you know, there are changes in your brain chemistry well before the yeah. diagnosis is actually made. So yeah. it kind of makes sense that maybe, you know, these smells become evident quite earlier on and maybe some other changes, bodily changes that... Um, are there but maybe not picked up or misinterpreted or misdiagnosed or not really well understood I mean maybe it's different nowadays than it was many years ago as we were discussing before um, but it yeah. makes sense doesn't it yeah you can live with something for quite a long time yeah. so I know I think my yeah. father did as well um, I don't know Matt's wanting to say something there but yeah I, I honestly I truly I did read up about that and I found it fascinating but mm -hmm. it's the same with Alzheimer's as well yeah. And that's a musty, like a musky smell. Um, that's interesting, isn't it? Something in it. Yeah, there's definitely something in it, isn't there? But I, I really wanted to go, Matt, into this deep brain stimulation. It's obviously yeah. very unique, and especially at that time. Yeah. So can you tell us sort of briefly how what how that worked and, and what yeah, it Yeah, sure, sure. I, I mean, I... I... See my headphones are falling. <laughs> my, that's because that, that's because I have two electrodes that in, in, in my. That's my excuse, and he was. Love it. No, basically, what happened was, um, I was getting to. I'd tried a lot of different treatments, and um, from and and then anything from intravenous sort of apomorphine, and mm -hmm. that caused me uh, extreme startle and have bagra like effects which really wasn't good when you're at work trying to make a brew no uh for obvious reasons and i i laugh about it now but when you're reacting to a telephone call in the tele sales office by ex with extreme startle and then you get the other problem as well it just really wasn't pleasant but i was also taking a lot of medication as well like sort of 24, 25 tablets a day. And it I was either very, uh, I, I, I explain it very simply as either like the Tin Man went out his oil from the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yeah. Or I was like the Scarecrow from the Wizard of Oz going all over the place because my medication was working too yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, so they, they, this was a, a, a pretty cutting edge piece of surgery where they, what they actually do under local anaesthetic, I might add, wow. they actually screw a stereostatic frame to your head to keep your head really, really still. Then they give you an MRI scan mm. to find out exactly where they need to put the electrodes. And they drill, they do two burr holes in the top for you. Oh. This is what they did for me anyway. It's probably, it's changed obviously over the years, but... Uh, they drill two burr holes in your head and they insert the um, electrodes and they stimulate, switch the stimulation on to see how you react when, when you're under local anaesthetic. Yeah. Now, it sounds like, I mean, I, I was obviously a lot more nervous because I'll tell, I'll tell a story because I actually passed out oh, when, they were, when they were trying to screw the stereo <laughs> thing to my head anyway. So I'd, I was I was actually asleep for it. Yeah. Many people are awake for it, yeah. but um, it's quite incredible. I mean, the the results. Basically, I've got two electrodes in my head attached to a wire that runs down the side. You can't really see it on the yeah. zoom, but to a wire, it's like having a brain pacemaker. Gosh. Now, the such a, the difference it's made to me has been phenomenal. It means I eat when I want to, which is 
which sounds really bizarre, like, wow, that, that's not no big thing. But believe me, when you eat anything and you know damn well that you, it's going to affect the medication absorption, yeah. which means you're going to be either be in pain or not be able to walk, mm -hmm. it's a big thing. Yes, it is. So um, that was a great thing. But also your own personal dignity. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was getting to the stage where I couldn't get out of bed at night um, because to go to the bathroom if I needed to. So I'd, I'd have a, it's, I mean, it's really not, I'd have a pop or a, a plastic bottle that yeah. not by the side of my bed to have to wee in that. And that's, it's not very, it's not nice. No, it's, no, it's not nice. It's but na and things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now, now having DBS, I can get out and get up in the middle of that. I can go for a wee. I can, I can eat when I want to, but I'm actually, <laughs> it's quite funny. I'm battery powered. <laughs> Now I have to, and it amuses me greatly because now the system I've got now, this is my third battery. When people say, it's going away for a week to recharge my battery. <laughs> I literally have to do that every single you day. You mean in the literal sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because if I, if I don't, I don't move. I literally don't move. I can't move at all. Oh, and my it's, goodness. This it is, is so scary yeah. and then i have like a remote control which i shall which i shall switch on and i'll try and cheat i don't know if you can see this but it's actually on full power at the moment it's got three bars yeah I can now see. when it goes down that's that means i'm full, fully powered up <laughs> so matt does that mean you know that battery um band you showed us so do yeah. you wear that on your body and that activates the electrolyte electro yeah i mean in your brain i okay. should i should show you how it works and i've done I'm this fascinated by this isn't it you, yeah. there, there are actually videos of an, a guy who in the u.s marines who switches his thing off and then switches it on again and he's wearing one of these and right. it's got about 26 million hits or something. But, wow. But, I mean, if you, can, you can't hear anything at the moment, can you? No. 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 Can you hear that? Yeah. yeah. That means it's not in the right place. When it goes silent, it means it's charging. Right. So, you are a so where would you normally... Sorry, Joanna. So where would you normally put that? It's there. It's yeah, charging yeah, it. Right. It's in the, the pacemaker is in exactly the same as you get a cardiac right, pacemaker. Okay. All right. Wow. I, I never knew this stuff. This I have learned something new today. But yeah, it's fascinating. It, it, it is it, and it's such a cool piece of kit because they yeah. they don't only really use it for Parkinson's. They can use it for Tourette's. They can use it for people with depression. They can use it for people with. Uh, cluster headaches just by stimulating different parts of the brain but yeah i mean you don't have to have it on your on your chest walls uh, a woman i know has got um for cosmetic purposes hers is down in her in her abdomen mm. right. um but no it is in a, without this i'd be absolutely goose i wouldn't be able to do anything at all that is just incredible, yeah. isn't it? Is just, I'm just amazed, that, you know, and I, I'm assuming, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Matt, and I'm sure you will because you know more about this than I do, um, with the um, electrodes in your brain, I'm assuming that that part of your brain that's getting stimulated is that part of your brain or that it, that is the pathway that creates dopamine and serotonin. So the whole point of you know, when our brains produce serotonin, they're, that's responsible for regulating sleep, appetite, mood. Yeah. So when you talked before about eating better, I would imagine because you're now producing, you know, serotonin, which activates your appetite. So yes, it's not only yeah. that. It's the fact that I have a constant flow and it's... Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm not waiting for to have medication to cross the blood-brain yeah, barrier. Yeah. My brain is permanently stimulated, right. but it is quite interesting because that my consultant has a, like a master controller, mm -hmm. and I honestly I feel like yeah. a puppet when he's when he's when he's setting it up because <laughs> one I remember most clearly because I had to have this new battery which is um, a rechargeable uh, in February on on February the twenty ninth twenty twenty so. 
and I actually got COVID when I was in hospital then. Oh, that's, that's, that's another story. Oh, but it didn't, it didn't affect me any, or at all, but uh, I've switched it off by life. And um, where was I going with this? There's another brain fog. It's another symptom of Parkinson's, by the way. Uh, where was I going with this? I can't remember. Sorry, you have to, sorry Jerry. You have to You're move saying on. about your specialist right. was saying something. We'll come back to it. Oh, yes. That, 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 the master no, that. controller that got me. They yeah. had a master that's controller. Right. Yeah, yes. That's what I got, Sarah, too. Yeah. I, was stop I stopped at the master controller. Yeah. <laughs> I, I only have a little thing, a little sort of therapy controller. He has like a master deck when he can, and he gets his little... <laughs> but I remember one time, it, it was almost like he was giving me a... That sounds wrong. Giving me a stroke, but because my eye was getting pulled, and he was, yeah. and it was pulling my eye and my face all over the place because it wasn't the right settings. And it's the most, and you can feel the electricity pumping through you. It's one of the most bizarre feelings. And but it, and obviously on a normal, correct me if I'm wrong, but on a normal um, Parkinson sufferer that doesn't have all these things, the gadgets you've got, yeah. The medication is, is really quite important on, on time, isn't it? Because you're actually very dependent on it being absorbed and actually being taken at the right time. Am I right? Because of the dopamine. Yeah, abs absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it's very, I mean, I, I've self-medicated since I was 10 years old, so I kind of know my body. So, yeah. um, so it was quite awkward sometimes for me in hospital because... I knew when my medication was working too well, which caused me dys um, dyskinesia. Yes. And I knew if it was too late because I'd go stiff and what have you. Yeah. But sometimes I remember reading my hospital notes, Matthew refused to take his medication. Now, I, and I was, and they, I was, it was like reading like a naughty boy's report, but <laughs> if I had taken the medication, it would have made me so dyskinetic and so uncomfortable. Yeah. Simply because there's so many factors that can affect the. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm talking to the converted. I know, but if you don't have enough hydration, if you haven't been to the bathroom yeah. during the day, it all affects the absorption of your medication. So, oh. whilst it is super important to get it on time, things like this can delay the absorption, and sometimes it can back up, and it, yeah. it all. It's like taking emodium and it can all explode at once, you know. Absolutely. One I, to only, one to the I, I only know yeah. because of my of my father having to take the medication. That's how I yeah. know. I know it's very time dependent. It is. Um, so obviously it must probably sounds a very silly question, but has it affected your confidence over the years, Matt, or have you just learned to deal with it? I think I mean there's no handbook first and foremost. Mm. And there certainly there certainly wasn't back then in the seventies and eighties when I was growing up. So I I think I never I never really have taken myself too seriously. Yeah. And one of the ways I kind of deal with having it is I kind of write amusing stories that make me feel better about what I've just done. Yeah. So it's I think it be it's more difficult now for people because there's so many people who post online about their their own experiences. Whereas I, I had nothing to compare uh, going yeah. back to the I, I, there was there was no template, there's nothing to say, well, if you do that, this will happen. It was all everything I did I did was like new for me, new for science, I guess. Very much so then, and the age you were. But I think I, my mum my mum and dad have got a lot I've got so much to thank them for because they went through absolute hell when I was little yeah not knowing what it was and everything else because they they spent it says in my digital health notes Parkinson's on my seventh birthday but I spent so much time in hospital with them trying to prove it wasn't mm. or it was something else yeah my parents I mean cocky but they always always encouraged me to be involved in everything. I was, I was in the school choir. I was in a church choir in Macclesfield. Not that 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 gave anything to the church choir. I must admit, <laughs> and certainly not with my voice. But um, <laughs> I was always in. I was in the Sea Scouts. I went. I'd, I've I've always been so active doing different things, and sometimes I had to sit it out. But, 
But that was the way it was. There's nothing I could do about it. But do you think that did help your confidence? Or do you think... Certainly, it, certainly. Because yeah. obviously the, the time the, you had to sit out was maybe not a good time, but those times you could do things, it would have helped yeah. confidence. Oh, yeah, I mean... It was bizarre. I mean, I don't, you, I don't, you probably know the King's School in Macclesfield, don't yes, you? Yes, yeah. Well, that, I went there, but in the third, my in my sort of third form or year seven, I had two teachers, one of whom called me dead legs. Oh. And the other teacher, one of the teacher, my history teacher called me sparrow legs as well. Right. But there was one particular incident I remember so clearly because because I couldn't always get to the classes in the same time as the other lads. Sometimes lads who weren't that keen to be on time would like drag me into the classroom. Yeah. And so they'd be slightly late for the classroom in one particular time. These two lads dragged me into the classroom and laid me on the floor in front of the blackboard. It was a maths lesson. And the teacher who's real old, a real old school maths teacher with, with with white hair, we, she, we we used to have to call her Sir, but she was actually uh, Mrs. Schofield was her name. She passed away years ago, so I can talk about her now <laughs> with impunity. But she actually made me lie on the floor in front of the blackboard for the whole lesson. Oh. She wouldn't let. All I wanted to do was I was fall because I'm lucky because because I've had Parkinson's for so long, and because I've had it growing, my body adapted to deal with the yeah. With the stresses and strains of it. So my, my actual arms and shoulders and back are very strong and I could easily lift my body weight. So all I would have done was haul myself into, onto a seat and carried on with the lesson. But no, she wouldn't let me do that. It was bizarre. Wouldn't get away with that now. Goodness. No, no, goodness me. No, they wouldn't. No. That's disgusting, really. But no, it's terrible. I'm so sorry you had to go through yeah. that. But yeah. that, that, the, we I didn't know any different, it's you know. Not, it's, it's really not. I mean, the, you it. say these days it it would be really really frowned upon. Yeah, but, so. of it, Yeah. I was going to ask you, Matt, about you just mentioned that there wasn't a handbook and you had nothing to compare to. Yeah, what yeah. What do you think is different now? You know, are there kids that are seven years old or ten years old getting diagnosed like you did? That well, this this here lies an interesting an interesting story because. In my in my job working as a in healthcare communications, I've been lucky enough to speak all over the world, and I've come across many sort of head, heads of hospital and consultants. There is a general reluctance to, particularly in the United States, I must add, to not diagnose people with Parkinson's uh -huh. who are who are young. Okay. Um, simply because they could be a burden to their insurance company. And this is, this is a real harsh thing to say, but I have a friend who's, who's, who's in the States. I think he's, he's in his early 40s now. He had to get three positive diagnoses from different consultants around the United States, which cost him a fortune, just so his insurance company would pay for his medication. Oh my God, that's shocking. But that's quite yeah. common, apparently. And I was, um, I remember I was, I was at speaking on a panel, uh, it's called, it was called AI Europe. It, mm. it was in, back in 2018, speaking on a panel there. And I, I was talking to uh, a head of a hospital, a children's hospital in Orange County in, in California. And I said to him, Hi, uh, do you um, are you aware of any children in your hospital who have young onset Parkinson's? And that she actually said, uh, "Sorry, that's my phone. I do apologise." Shouldn't be surprised. And she actually, and he actually, he actually, he actually said, "No, we don't diagnose children with Parkinson's." That's unreal. So that I think that's that that's because. Now that there's so many patients who can not only share with each other, but yes. share their stories with the world. Mm -hmm. So many younger people are coming forward and saying, listen, that, 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 this could be is something that I might well have got. So I think it's a lot more common than, than the authorities or the powers that be care to admit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, 
yeah. a very good question. I'm and also thinking, think, yeah, go on, sorry. sorry. You think the sooner that they have any onset of symptoms, the more help exactly. and support they could get before it progresses. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah, 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 without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. Because you've done a lot of different, you've yeah. had a lot of different experimental treatments, haven't you? I, ha I have, yes. Um, now, at the time, because I never, there wasn't the access to the information available, mm -hmm. you just go with the flow. I mean, it's some of the things that I've taken, you if I'd have known or read up the side effects of them before I had took them, I'd never have taken them. No. Yeah. You know, but there the just wasn't the access to the information there really at all. Plus mm. you'll do anything to help yourself, you know, yeah. and you trust of those course. experts. Mm. But I think my question was about the confidence was to bring Helen in really. <laughs> Cause I know, um, being the expert on on psychology and confidence and mental health i just wanted to ask helen really about how it affects people's confidence and you know what what your take is on it and and if it can help anybody really yeah just before i talk about that what i wanted to say before just with what you were saying before matt um i know i know i'm digressing but i think it's, it's an important point you know just with yeah. insurance companies not um supporting diagnoses of of Parkinson's I think and I'm only going on what I know not just from Parkinson's but from other conditions that are more lifelong and fixed like Parkinson's yeah, yeah. I think it's because you know if it's the secondary symptoms like depression anxiety you'll get private health insurance it's more likely to to fund those because they see those as temporary you know but if there's a fixed condition a lifelong condition they tend to not so not be as supportive because no amount of therapy is ever going to be enough and they'll just have to keep paying I yeah exactly yeah. To do with that yeah so i just wanted to, i'm not yeah it's, no I, 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 I work with big pharma all the time and i know their yeah. psychology yeah. just to make it right i don't it doesn't <laughs> I, I, but, I, um, given i've just said that i don't support it i think it's no, really absolutely. wrong because like yeah, sarah no. was saying you need to get onto these symptoms obviously well before they get any worse and if anything, sooner or later yeah yeah if yeah. they support it even though it is a you know a fixed condition at least then you can help that mm. person get the interventions like a psychologist you know to try and manage some of these symptoms or cognitive and you know symptoms that um mm. that you know coincide with having parkinson's and of course all the emotional uh, the symptoms as well yeah, just so, going back right if i can can joanna just super quick if somebody give me the opportunity to, to have access to a psychologist knowing what i know now and what i've been through yeah i'd have absolutely jumped the opportunity yeah. i really yeah. would and yeah. this is why i thought this was an interesting combo yeah. today because oh yeah the, everything matters when it comes to your mental health your your, your health in general your diet your nutrition everything so yeah, yeah, totally. that's why i thought we'd be quite an explosive team today because obviously everyone's got their own take on it and their expertise yeah. and i think just what you were asking me before as far as the confidence issue goes i think yeah confidence comes because certain things are already in place do you know what i mean mm. so whether yeah. I know we're talking about Parkinson's today, but if I look at it from a general yes. physical illness point of view, if I can yes. just look at it like that, um, there's a sort of advice I would give a client um, around Parkinson's will probably very, be very similar to the same that I would give to someone else who, you know, had just had a cancer diagnosis or mm. you know, some other condition because the mind and body work together. Yeah. When there's a physical illness, obviously it's going to affect your mental health. And when there's a mental health issue, it can impact your physical capacity yeah. as well. So we know the two are linked. So therefore, um, again, being not an expert in Parkinson's, but what I would say as far as top tips are concerned with, with any physical illness, including Parkinson's, I would think, and even more so because it's Parkinson's, the first thing that pops into my mind is exercise and diet. You know, so when I think about yeah. exercise, because anything that's going to get the body moving, the muscles, anything that's going to help you know, balance you in turn, you know, balance, bring more balance and mobility so that you can get on with your daily functioning yes. has got to be a, 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 a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I find, sorry. sorry, I was going to say, I find it astonishing that they're only just doing doing research into this now. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Because surely to goodness, they, they exercise and diet is good for everybody. Just Absolutely. across the, you yeah. know, it's... Yes, regardless of <laughs> whether it's Parkinson's or not, you know. So I think the, like I explained before, the, the balance of mobility has improved, but not only that, you've got an added benefit because you're already exercising. Exactly. You're your mental health. Yeah. And there's an abundance of research out there. In fact, that, you know, heaps out there yeah. that, link, that link mental health and exercise you know so we know it works we know exercising on a fairly consistent basis will not only help your mental health in terms of feeling you know living happily healthily productively efficiently but also from a parkinson's point of view or any other physical illness point of view helps you to take control of you know to some degree yes. of your physical illness and yeah. which so I would say exercises and, and, and of course, diet. And I'm sure Sarah will probably tell us more about that in a moment. But, you know, diet, including not only the food you eat, but also drinking, you know, keeping hydrated. You mentioned that before, Matt. You know, yeah, crucial, body, crucial. Functions, you know, perform normally. Yeah. Um, they, I've, I've read somewhere that eating well and, you know, eating foods that maximise, you know, um, uh, antioxidants are really important as well be, uh, because what that does is help break um, helps reduce the likelihood of our of brain cells particularly in, in Parkinson's um, uh, dying off really so it prevents the uh, the oxidization of it yeah. so I think definitely diet you know leafy vegetables green vegetables fruit you know all those sorts of things and I'm sure Matt will be able to tell us more as well as Sarah that, that, so diet is essential to that because the more you look after yourself on a basic Absolutely. level, the yeah. more, you know, control and the more, um, you know, better managed it, your condition can be. If, you, if we're just going to go in, and you mentioned it before, Matt, you know, of course, this is a massive thing for people who have lived fairly normally, I would say, you know, who could compare it to a previous life where they were functioning really well, doing things normally, and suddenly they're hit with this diagnosis, you know, and this is why maybe going to see, which is another tip, maybe going to see a psychologist, someone who's yeah. qualified and experienced to work around the grief that's associated with just getting that diagnosis. I mean, it was different for you, Matt, because you didn't know any different because you were diagnosed quite young. Um, but for those people who have spent many years, you know, thinking they were functioning quite well and maybe their symptoms weren't picked up or they didn't experience much dysfunction. Have a shock. Yeah. Yeah, have a shock. yeah. Well, hang on a minute, what does this mean now mm -hmm. for me? Um, and so I think that needs some processing, maybe some talking out with, with someone who's appropriately qualified. Um, because Parkinson's and any other physical illness doesn't have to define you. You are much no. bigger than that. You are, that, and that's what I try and encourage in my clients that they're much bigger than their disease or their their condition. You know, it's all about understanding, and this is where the, going to see someone might help is understanding. You know, what is it you can change and control, and what is it you can't change and control. Mm -hmm. And for those things that you can't change and control, maybe that's going to mean accepting that this is this is what this is what curveballs life has given me, yeah. and I can either dwell on it and worry about it and catastrophize. And in question, why me? Why me? Well, who knows why you? We don't know. It just happens. And it's just understanding that, you know, I can, they can accept what is beyond their, their, their control. And accepting is to not be confused with right or wrong. It's got nothing to do with that. It's accepting that this is just what is. Because mm. if you take the path of least resistance there, if you stop fighting it, yeah. you'll find you'll start to cope better with it because then, you know, through the help with the person you'll go to see, you can help identify those areas that you can change. Yeah. And also, and, Helen, yeah. and another one, I don't know if you're going to say this, but I'm just jumping in, um, is going to support groups where you've got Absolutely. the same... That was my next point. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And that was my, my fourth point there was... Yeah going to support groups, being with other like-minded individuals, going through, you know, particularly tough time. And, you know, you can learn from, they can learn from each other. Maybe some things that works for one person may, may not be something that another person had considered and maybe thought about trying. But, but the more you share it and the more that it's talked about and the more awareness we have and the, the less you, people are inclined to be alone and withdraw, I think the better because what you're getting there is a reassurance, a degree of normalization that yeah. everything that 
every person with Parkinson's is experiencing is normal, is normal yeah. for the condition. You know, so I think that really speaks volumes, especially when you can get find you know the appropriate support groups there. So getting some support groups, and you might get that through your the psychologist or counselor that you're seeing, you know, might be able to help you with that. I know I certainly try and link people with the appropriate yeah. self-help groups when, okay. when they come to see me for various other matters. So we talked about the therapy, the support groups, the exercise, the diet. Um, and of course, the sleep as well. You talked about sleep as well before, didn't you, Matt? You know, yep. so really making that a focus because when we're not resting well, when we're going to, like anybody with or without Parkinson's, you're going to wake up not rested, groggy, moody. Right. Um, and yeah, it, it, then, you know, we, we can all relate to that. And yep. of course, because Parkinson's, like many other physical illnesses, are also linked to depression and anxiety. Um, you know, we need to make sure that that sleep component is, you know, is well looked after there. So looking after your sleep, your diet, um, exercise, support groups, going to see someone. I mean, that's roughly about five. Fantastic. Yeah, fantastic points. Yeah, but really good. I think that they're, they're really quite important because mm. when we're, when we're, when we're functioning better, and that's, you know, it's understanding that this is your, this is your new normal, you know, it doesn't have to be right or wrong. This is just about accepting that this is my condition. So the more accepting we are of that, the more that we can do something about as opposed to catastrophizing and why, and this is not fair, and why did it happen to me and fighting it, you'll end up spending more time and energy fighting it, which is not good for your depression or anxiety, no. than it is to actually go, right, there's not much I can do about it because it's just what happens here and what happens to my body. But hang on a minute, I've got something to say here. I've got something I can do, you know, so finding, surrounding yourself with other like-minded, positive people. Matt talked about that before. Mm. Um, finding those things yeah. that you love to do, hobbies and yeah. interests that you just want to just throw yourself into and enjoy. So I know that's fairly quick, but I hope that's just given... I'm no, it's fantastic. I know we're going to talk to Sarah about diet in a little while, um, but they're really good points. Obviously, as always with these shows, we're limited on time, but I mean, we're covering <laughs> yeah. a lot here in a short space yeah. of time. So just to continue with, with talking to Matt about things, I know that you've been doing fundraising as well over the years, haven't you? So yeah. um, what have you achieved personally? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, I think, Parkinson's has made me into a bit of an adrenaline junkie because I, I've, <laughs> I've always liked to do things. I've always liked to challenge myself and take myself out of my comfort zone because I think who knows what you can achieve if you don't try. So just for example, recently uh, in 2020, I did a wing walk. Oh, wow. Which is one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. Uh, and then 2021, I did the uh, zip wire in Snowdonia, wow. which is the fastest zip wire in the world. Unbelievable. Which is, which is, that's phenomenal. I've yeah. abseiled down Manchester Town Hall. Oh. I've taken part in the Wilmslow Half Marathon. Gee. God. Um, <sighs> Oh, I, I did the Beatham, Beatham Tower run in Manchester for the Christie's. That wasn't for Parkinson's. Uh, that's 798 stairs, 43 floors. Oh, and you have to, I did it in under 13 minutes. Faster than a lot. But it was, it was through work we did this. Yeah. And I was I was jumping over people who were who were half my age who were being sick. Oh, you were. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? That's something that's a real positive of my Isn't part. It? Mm. The reason is because I have very strong arms and I was able to hold myself up the banisters really super quickly. I did go up the stairs as well, but because I I can actually do stairs because they're they're all the same size yeah. and they're visual cues. So yeah, I and I've all I also get and this is the beat. This is I've had I was I'm but not I'm but I'm, I'm actually incredibly proud because I get invited to some great do's as well. Yeah. Um, I was invited to my Tyndall Celebrity Golf Day. No, I don't play golf, and there was a load of people there who many people would be extremely pleased to meet. 
uh, the guy the guy who stars in Belfast and uh, oh, right, yeah. the Irish guy, the Irish actor whose name escapes me. I've met Orlando Bloom. I've met I've met whole, so many people. And You're pretty famous, man. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little slap. <laughs> But no, it's, I, I, um, should go, I should come out and spend time with you. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually done quite a lot. Of, uh, I've done three uh, talks for Insight, which is done by uh, an Australian charity, actually. Yes, it is. Yeah. And I, I've done two one-hour uh, lectures for them in the, over the years. But I think I, I'm super conscious Sarah's not had much to say and I'm feeling really guilty about talking to her. It's okay. She's she's gonna tell us. She's gonna This is really rare for me as well. So <laughs> yeah. come on, I'm really enjoying. Yeah, it's oh, good. Oh, if I made it <laughs> that one, <laughs> what, yeah, what I want to say about mental health and just recently being diagnosed recent diagnosed and things and the fact that I want to tell a little tale about how I I, I had up a, a global well it's a mental wellness thing for Parkinson's called Parky Life. And if you Parky want to go Life, to the website, yeah. Parky yeah. Life, yeah. They're hacks, they're little nuggets of positivity accompanied by amazing illustrations. And I'm going to show you some of them now. They're, they're like... Oh, great, the little cards. Little okay. cards, they're on, yeah. they're all... Oh, and they've got like affirmations on the back. Yeah, the affirmations, like there's, there's funny stories oh, there's wow. hacks there's tips but they're all beautifully illustrated and i i mean that that's one that you'd, you'd like sarah this it says you're not a sun-dried tomato <laughs> <laughs> and that that that, that, that encourage and that's the image it's fantastic oh, it's, oh i love that the piece of advice is keep hydrated Parkinson's medication has the tendency yeah. to shrivel us up like sun-dried tomatoes. Wow. And then the little, the, so if everybody who's diagnosed with Parkinson's or whatever age was given a pack of these or given access to these kind of yeah, information. I think so, yeah. That's a great idea. It, it would make a whole heap of difference. Yeah. And I've got to tell you this because it, it's only just happened just before the show, show actually went on air. Uh, I got some guys who are some neuroscientists who are going to be rowing the Atlantic Ocean in December have agreed to have the Parky Life logo on their boat and they're going to get they're giving oh, it great. because they're so impressed with this project and actually it's about, about me as well. They, oh, they, well they, they, some, uh... They're going to have it on their boat, the Parky oh, Life logo amazing. on their boat. As oh, they that's such good news. Yeah. So it's really cool. For you. But it's really yeah. cool. It really is cool. So the Parky Life, the um, awareness that you, you're talking about, can people yeah. access that? Yeah, if they go to par- www.parkylife.com. Yes. And these these got all these images on all the all the hacks and tips. Like here's another one with the, with avoid blockages, keep <laughs> regular. Yeah. Constant, constant. I mean, I like that. have have any the. These hacks Great. and tips have been given. I've sourced most of them, but they've come from all over the world. They've come from consultants. They've come from speech yes. therapists. They've come from carers. And they've come with people with Parkinson's. And they're just so beautifully illustrated. Um, <laughs> it's on sing loudly and often. It makes your heart happy. Aww. And it's good for your vocal cords. Mm-hmm. Seek out like those that. who've walked in your shoes. They're the fountain of knowledge and the best support ever. Keep your fizz. And then there's 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 a love there's a lovely one of a story actually, because we don't do have hacks funny stories like and that's how it first kicked off really. <laughs> and there's one where a chap gets on a train and uh, a gentleman in the seat stands up and hits says, "Hey, you can have my seat." And he says, no, 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 I'm fine. I can, I can manage, I can manage. And this guy, no, no, I insist. I just have my seat. Anyway, the doors of the train close and the train continues along its journey. And the chap says, but that was my stop. Oh. So basically, yeah. the guy had got up to get out off the train. And the guy with Parkinson's wasn't going to have his seat. So he pushed him back down on the seat very politely and said, no, no. You stay sat there and the, the guy had missed his stop. So, I mean, that's like something that happens, a little funny story, you know. Yeah. 
people but, trying to help and it goes a bit wrong. Yeah, it goes a bit wrong. But it, um, it's fun, it's funny it, then. It, it's great yeah. how people there's no. so many things yeah honestly we could be here hours couldn't we, we, could. Um, we could but easily. i know i know that i do want to mention that in matt's lifetime it's estimated correct me if i'm wrong <laughs> but you've taken over two hundred and fifty thousand medication tablets yeah yeah it's a lot it's um, a lot so obviously in that time my question was uh, we've talked a bit about diet and we're going to bring um sarah in in a minute um but you obviously you've had to change your diet um, and and even the way that you live. Now, has that happened in a dramatic way or have you just done you it know, to suit yourself? You know what? I mean, it's only recently where I particularly consciously changed my diet. And that's, yeah. I have brown and prunes and things in the morning to keep me regular. Yeah. Want to a better word. But apart from that, I've, I think the, the best part and possibly why I've been so resilient for so long is, I keep to as normal a life as I possibly can. I don't sort of, I don't sort of say, well, I can't eat that because I've got Parkinson's or whatever. Yes. I I try and keep as normal and I I don't make a, it, it might, I don't know, it might be the detriment to me. I mean, I've got a bit of, I'm a bit rounder than I should be. Put it that way, so you should exercise a little bit You're more. You're enjoying life, it's fine. I am, I am. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I know, for a fact, nutrition and diet is, is crucial with Parkinson's. Too much protein, for example, can really upset the system and the absorption of medication because, mm. I mean, Sarah, you, you'll probably correct me here, but amino acids have quite a big effect on medication going into the body, and I say it particularly has in Parkinson's anyway. Mm -hmm. So I used to try and avoid eating protein um, when I thought I was going to, when I planned to do things, if, if, you, if you like that. Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah, and okay. I think it's snacking a little and often used to help me as well. Yes. Yes, they say that, don't they? To eat smaller amounts, but more regularly. So if we bring Sarah in. Chipmunk? Yes. Because we, she'd been ever so patient. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm enjoying listening. And do you know, Matt already mentioned it earlier. Well, I don't know whether I just got the feeling from you, Matt, that you, you you're not pharmaceutical drugs are amazing, right? Medicines yeah. are amazing. And all the scientific advancements that we've had in medicine have been incredible. Yeah. But I think we all know the phrase, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food, but which is like 2000 years old. But I think it's only been like the last 50 years or so, 50 to 100 years that we've had all of these drugs, all of these medicines and even like, you know, the surgery that you had on your brain, which is incredible. And I think what what we've done over this really short span of time is kind of throw the baby out of the bathwater and say, now we've got all these medical interventions. We've kind of lost the focus on what it really means to be human in a human body on this planet, whether you are a human with, a, with an illness, a disease, or how, whatever your particular experiences in your body. And we've lost focus on, on what we need, like the food that we, the food that we're meant to eat and the way I that we totally, to totally about. agree. Yeah. I got that impression from you. <laughs> But at the same time, you know, using using drugs, using interventions is is huge, especially when people are unwell and, and they need the support. So I think I don't know. I was going to ask you, Matt, if you'd had and you just muted yourself. Look, he's trying to have a little break. <laughs> no, no, I was, I was having a slip of this slip of drink. You mentioned that you'd been to some some well, not some, but a lot of conventions and conferences. And there's yep. um, there's a doctor, Dr. Terry Walls, no relation of mine. It's W A H. LS, who right. is a um, really famous doctor in the in the kind of illness world, in the autoimmune world, because she was diagnosed with MS and she was in a wheelchair with her MS symptoms. And she went and researched everything about nutrition and functional medicine and neurobiology. And actually, this can be a bit of a triggering word that, that cured herself. Right. She she took herself from being in her wheelchair to being fully mobile again through this protocol that she's now kind of created and developed and she shares with the world. Um, so I don't know if you if you've ever heard of her personally. Or... I haven't, but I've heard of similar, similar things with, with particularly 
down to diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. And I'm, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that the drugs, particularly that are manufactured by pharmaceutical companies, mm -hmm. aren't necessarily as good at curing and helping people as living healthily, yeah. eating well, sleeping yeah. well. Yeah. I think they contribute tremendously to your own well-being. Yeah, for sure. And I, I, I mean, I can well, I, I can't believe. Well, I, I can't really believe she was cured, but I can certainly believe it. It relieved her symptoms. So yeah, tremendously. Right, that she was living, a, a, she was li living a freer life in terms of what what she experienced the limitations of the illness that that she was suffering with but this was quite recently so the book's only a few years old so if anyone's interested in you know finding out something you can google quite easily the walls protocol and dr walls so i i love i love her stuff and i love the kind of i'm going um, to try and write that down actually yeah. if i may yeah so how, how do you spell it w w a h l s terry walls um, is that terry t double r i i think it's with a y actually matt but you think Dr. Walls or the Walls Protocol, or is yeah. it W H A L S? I will need to go get you. I'll get you. The, <laughs> yeah, we'll get a link. W H A L S. Yeah. Um, so I know, like, I I was really passionate about. Um, I know we're short on time, but you know, I was really passionate about about those things myself. You know, I was diagnosed with some autoimmune stuff myself, and coming from a psychology background, I got so interested in what what biologically can I change? And I love what Helen said, and I'm going to echo really a lot of the things that that Helen said. So, you know, in terms of our overall lifestyle and reducing the stresses on the body even for, yep. for people that aren't unwell, that aren't yeah. struggling with any illnesses, we're all affected by, you know, this, even light, right? Like even just like yeah. things that aren't natural to us as humans, like blue lights coming from our screens mm -hmm. and, and all the toxins in our food, which is really mm -hmm. unfortunate, but we are bombarded with toxins in our food. So we say, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food, but not all food is going to be, um, healthful for you it's not going to be helpful for you and you mentioned that Matt as well about yeah, different, totally. different types yeah. of foods. Um, in terms of stresses on the body as well sleep Helen said it so I'm not going to go into detail but getting enough sleep and I think for people that are unwell there can be a lot of pressure to to do these things to kind of um, you know to, to sleep well to have good uh, kind of sleep hygiene and have these lifestyle factors so one of the things that I wanted to say, which is more on the psychological side as well, which is not to have the pressure mm -hmm. to try and do everything and to try and eat perfectly and um, and to and, and Matt said it perfectly, you know, just live life and have fun and yeah. indulge and do things, you know, laugh and, and experience food as pleasure and joy and all of those things as well, whilst understanding that they can be a foundational way of, of maintaining a life that could be so much more um, enjoyable with less, you know, less pain, less symptoms um, without putting too much pressure on yourself. I think it's a huge thing. Like it's so easy to say, get more sleep and yeah. eat better. Is, but how do it? you actually do that stuff? Right. Okay. That's, that's the crux of it. So it's more the psychology of how do we do that? And, you know, from my side, it's just do small things. Just start and, and with I small think, things. Sarah, that just educating yourself. I mean, when you're told that you've got something wrong, that's obviously you need to, you wouldn't know everything about that illness. So you need to go away and educate yourself and know what's, what will make you feel better and what will make you feel worse. Um, like things that Matt was saying, like, you know, too much protein for himself and things like that. You need to be aware of what is right and what's wrong for that particular illness. Yeah, to totally. And also your own unique expression of it, because yeah. not all bodies respond the same to certain medications, or certain procedures or certain foods. So there is an element of, of trial and error. 
And that comes down to, again, taking it slow, making really small changes, because if we try and change too much, then we don't really know what it is we've changed that's being effective. That's right. I think it's about celebrating those little changes as well. Mm. Um, I mean, what I always encourage when I'm, if I'm speaking at a group of parking, for anybody really, I mean, one of, I say celebrate the little wins, and the little win for me is, is like going into the kitchen, making a cup of coffee without spilling the coffee everywhere. Yeah. Or the milk or getting the cup back workstation in one piece. That to me is great. And I enjoy the coffee much more if I can do that. Oh, yeah. Plus, it's a realistic goal to have. And it feeds your confidence, doesn't it? Because, oh, well, of course it does. Like, yeah, yeah. I got, you know, to the lounge from spilling it. Yay me, you know. It's those little wins that give us the, well, it, from a, a transmitter point of view, those little wins that give us the dopamine hit that fit, yeah. that we feel great. Ex you know? Exactly. I totally yeah. agree. And they say one, one of the biggest things, I know, Joanna, you mentioned it. What advice would I give Parkinson's? I would say yourself, mm. enjoy the little wins. You will have to rest. But Enjoy every day because you die once, but you live every single day. Yeah, absolutely true. And I think one yeah. of the, the biggest I have is people be ashamed of showing their symptoms or telling people. Yes, absolutely. It's That's a massive one. fault you've yeah. got Parkinson's. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I recently... In an, ad, in an advert for Parkinson's, you ask, it says, I now sometimes when I do try and eat, my cutlery's like as if it's a polar opposite to my food. And I, in my mouth, does it stop me going out and having a lick? No. 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 Not, not because I'm not embarrassed yeah. about it. No, you can't. It, it, why should you be? Exactly. I mean, you were saying before about not letting it define you, you could absolutely, exactly. yeah. absolutely. I mean, it makes for the right who's sitting near me uncomfortable, flying everywhere. <laughs> but I mean, hey, yeah, right. Right. you can always say sorry and pick up that lawn, you uh, spaghetti or something all over. Yeah, they can take catching skills. <laughs> 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 so what we're going to do, because we're short on time, is I was going to ask Matt to to sort of reel off a load of helplines and websites. But what we'll do instead is we'll put some links on for, for anyone that wants help. So I'll get those off Matt and we'll actually put the links on for, to save time. Um, but it's, it's, it's been a idea. pleasure. I mean, I could talk here for forever. It's so interesting. Here all day. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely. been amazing. I've really, I've really enjoyed the experience. And yeah it's... and it, it really is it's it's quite something and you know you've had an amazing life um you know from from what you've said as well it's not all doom and gloom um you know you've had some amazing experiences as well and this is down to obviously you as a person your personality and and the fact that you are so driven um and it's just amazing to hear and it's so wonderful to speak to you today. Um, and I thank you all for coming on. I thank you, uh, Helen and Sarah also for your expertise today. Um, I think it's important that we've mentioned all these things because as we said, they're all linked. Um, but anyone that is struggling with an illness or Parkinson's particularly can reach out to Matt. Uh, again, we'll put the links on, but you can actually find him pretty quickly on social media by Googling him. Uh, it's Matt Eagles. Um, and anyone wanting to um, talk to Helen or Sarah, girls, if you can just quickly give us your contact details, Helen. Your contact details for anyone to get hold of you is. I is think you just, um, you just <laughs> dropped it. Um, I was just saying, Helen, your contact <laughs> details for anyone that wants to get hold of you. Can you just uh, let us know? Sorry, you just want me to tell you. It's coming okay. out a bit. Oh, <laughs> techno issues. We're doing so well. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I'll just you know, this is what happens when, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, suddenly. The links. Oh, here's, here's Teddy now saying hello to everybody as well. <laughs> 
Um, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put the links on for you as well, girls, so that everyone's got um, contact details of everybody. Um, I feel we're just going to have a little problem here with tech now. It's all going freezing the screen. So um, anyone, yeah. as I say, that wants to get hold of anybody here today, we'll put the links up. So thank you to everybody. The next show is the 3rd of April, and we are talking to Wendy Beale about her sobering, her amazing sobering journey. So that, that'll be another good show. But thank you for, to oh, thank everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Thank Great, you. Matt. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.